welcome the students of MA English uh, to our program. We have already had one part uh, and Professor Bruce Bennett in the second part is now going to talk to us about continue rather I should say to talk to us about Australian literary history and this time we would be dealing with the contemporary trends uh, in Australian literary history. Uh, the first part we were talking mainly of the settling in of English, but then uh, we also see we also saw how changes have taken place, how the aboriginal's uh, status uh, was recognized, got to be recognized and so on and how Australian literary history really uh, has undergone uh, changes. So, that has been uh, it has been quite a vibrant sort of uh, history or society I would say which has accepted all these changes and the immigrations uh, the immigrants have been the other force uh, uh, that has been recognized and uh, there have been also the other extremes as a matter of fact there was an ex interesting uh, case uh, of a publication called the Demidenko Diary uh, 1996 where uh, someone of Australian origin uh, tried to uh, make capital out of posing uh, to be uh, an immigrant and uh, I, I would perhaps now ask Bruce to comment on that. <laughs> Thank you uh, Santosh. Yeah, um, you are quite right about, um, about Australian uh, culture in the contemporary period and uh, being um, uh, one that has uh, dealt with uh, issues of multiculturalism uh, through migration um, and uh, in other ways. Uh, and I think in, in some, some respects Australia has been a, um, a leader in this, um, this area. We have uh, accepted people of more nationalities probably um, into our country than any other country apart from the United States. And um, one of the interesting things about this is that um, uh, there have been, while there have been um, uh, strongly nationalist and isolationist uh, aspects of, um, of the culture. In general, as you rightly say, uh, Australian society has, um, has accepted um, uh, immigra immigrants and, um, and their ways. Not without, not without tension, not without conflict and that is what some of the literature yeah. that we are interested in uh, deals with. Uh, one of the books that I think uh, to me says a lot about this is, um, is Christopher Koch's novel Across the Sea Wall. Uh, which was um, a book of the 1960s dealing with uh, a young Australian man who uh, is returning to England uh, on a ship and he meets um, a refugee Latvian woman. Uh, they have, uh, she is returning to her own country. They get off the ship um, in, um, uh, in this part of the world, in um, India and they uh, they cross the country uh, and um, in the process find each other and their differences and they remain um, in this part of the world um, rather than going on, which was the usual thing, on their pilgrimage back to the mother country, to England. And that kind of pattern, I think, that rupture with a notion that, uh, that the real centre of uh, Australian intellectual life was back in Britain um, uh, was, is, is one of the defining features and you talked about uh, the Demodenko uh, debacle as some of us call it uh, in Australia uh, where a young uh, woman whose parents were actually from, from uh, Britain but was living in Brisbane uh, decided that um, she would um, pose um, as, um, as uh, uh, a, uh, a person from uh, one of the um, one of the European countries, and um, she uh, she tries to do this, and um, and then is discovered, and um, the uh, the uh, the saga goes on. But that kind of uh, influence of of immigration, the the rise in the role of Asia in Australians' minds, um, and uh, its um, combination with mm -hmm. the links with Britain. I wouldn't say the obliteration of the links with Britain, but the combination of 
confrontation with um, European interests and, of course, the rising uh, force of America, uh, mm. the USA. All of this has been part of our history as it has of yours. Yeah, yeah I think this has been very interesting, uh, the uh, focus of interest uh, shifting to America. Uh, and uh, not only, but then I think the positive thing is that it has not remained confined to America. And uh, of late, there has been a great focus on the Asia-Pacific region. As a matter of fact, Australia has, uh, I would say, now begun to recognize that it is part of this region. And therefore, uh, Australia's policies also we find are changing. There's a focus towards the Asian countries. Uh, in all spheres, in trade, in commerce, uh, and in the promoting... And in sport. In sport, yes. That's, <laughs> that's a very important area. Uh, with the test matches uh, going on uh, uh, in Australia and the Indian team being there, uh, mm. though they've not been performing well. <laughs> well, some of them have been performing <laughs> yes. outstandingly well. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, so, would you like to comment on the uh, uh, role of the Asia-Pacific uh, region particularly talk about Yes, that. yes. I, th I think there have been two phases of, of Australian engagement in um, Southeast Asia and Asia more generally in, as evidenced in the literature. And the first phase was one in which um, from the early 1980s um, Australian journalists or professional people would um, visit Asia and um, and uh, learn something, there'd be a conflict of some kind, um, uh, whether it was the, um, uh, the aftermath of, um, of uh, uh, the year of living dangerously, 1965 in Indonesia, mm -hmm. or whether it was um, some other crisis, um, the um, Tiananmen Square uh, riots in uh, China, uh, in Nicholas Joseph's fiction. You would get Australian novels by Australians um, or films, uh, going to these countries, being bruised or injured in some way and returning having learnt something uh, but, but uh, never being quite the same again. The second wave of interest in, in literature about Asia has been uh, one in which uh, Australian uh, first generation immigrants from countries of Asia have been writing their own lives and their own accounts of their experience out in their fiction. And um, Yasmin Gunaratne from Sri Lanka would be one example of these. Mm. Um, Adib Khan, uh, mm. Bangladesh would yeah. be another, uh, and, and a number of Chinese Australian mm. writers. So this is a very interesting period for the interaction of Australian with, uh, with Indian uh, experiences. Yeah, uh, uh, that's true. And uh, also the uh, Bush city dichotomy, yes. the uh, gender race uh, uh, issues, the religious vis-a-vis, uh, -vis the scientific modes of uh, thinking, they also have, uh, I think, come out in the mm. writing and uh, they make for interesting uh, uh, studies. I think so. Uh, I think the early period we were talking about when mm. the colonial I, EYE, was, and, and just I, were most important. Um, that was a period in which uh, the man on the land was um, the pioneer figure, mm. was paramount, and, um, and women reacted against this. And, and we have uh, novels like My Brilliant Career uh, by Miles Franklin, mm -hmm. which resists that notion. But in the later period, I think um, uh, fiction about the cities mm. and about um, in detective fiction, for mm. example, which preeminently is a literature about um, mm. about cities, uh, has um, has become a very significant mode, and and even um, female detective fiction uh, has become quite a significant uh, feature of the Australian literary scene, and so women's writing and um, and writing about women has, um, I think, uh, taken the front row in much mm. of uh, fiction in Australia in the 1990s and perhaps arguably um, in Australian life more generally. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I was wondering, um, off late there has been uh, children's writing also, uh, mm. though we have not uh, really uh, got to uh, 
get many of those books over and mm -hmm. you have not had the opportunity to read, but I was wondering if you could uh, talk a bit about uh, uh, children's writing uh, as it has developed now or is developing in Australia. Is that also a major force just like feminism, writing yes. about women or writing by women is? Yes, I, um, I, I, th I think it is so. It is not one of my fields of specialization, mm -hmm. but um, uh, the writing of, um, of somebody like uh, Victor Kelleher, for example, mm -hmm. one of Australia's better known mm -hmm. writers for um, young adults mm -hmm. as well as for children. Um, there tends to be a distinction uh, that, that talks about children's writing, young adults' fiction, mm -hmm. which is a very much a growing field, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and uh, adult fiction, mm -hmm. but an interchange across those genres mm -hmm. as well. All of that has um, has, uh, I think, enriched mm. the field of Australian writing very considerably. Yeah. And there are a number of Australian authors, both women and men, who, mm. who would, um, I think, uh, be very of great interest to, to readers in other countries. Yeah. So actually, there there's been a lot of one would say innovation and in ideology. Uh, actually, that's I'm taking those terms from uh, Susan Lever's essay here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, mm. In this uh, uh, literary history. Uh, and uh, women's writing has really uh, sort of really come of age and there's so much of women's writing that we are uh, getting. Uh, so this, uh, would you like to further talk on this innovation and yeah. ideology? It seems to me that uh, it's easier in some ways to talk about a, an individual writer and uh, Dorothy Hewitt is uh, one yeah. writer who is a, a woman I would whose poetry I would compare perhaps with uh, that of Kamala Das um, mm -hmm. as uh, being uh, deliberately flouting conventions. Um, mm -hmm. And um, her plays and her poetry um, and her autobiography are very feminist in that mm. sense. Uh, and, um, and there are, on the other hand, uh, many women writing in a much quieter, less obviously mm -hmm. rebellious way. Mm -hmm. uh, about um, about society and having uh, in their fiction uh, leading figures who mm -hmm. um, who are women and who are making their own decisions about their lives and mm -hmm. um, who are part of that changing geography of of Australia which we mm -hmm. see in the early 21st century. Yeah, actually, the the sort of tensions that uh, societies face, whether Indian or Australian, are sometimes. Uh, uh, sort of uh, similar, and uh, in children's, uh, I mean, in writing which uh, deals with the children's point of view, mm. like for example, um, Beverly Farmers Among Pigeons, yes. uh, where the tensions of uh, you know separated families, mm. and then the uh, children's point of view coming in there, that mm. is also quite significant, which is something that uh, could be shared uh, uh, and felt by readers here. Uh, so we get into, you know, points that we can very easily uh, grasp and appreciate. Mm. Uh, the other area uh, I was thinking about is drama, mm. and uh, I think in drama also, particularly Aboriginal drama, uh, uh, Jack Davis has been a leading figure, mm. and some of his uh, plays like uh, No Sugar, uh, they have uh, drawn. A the performances have drawn mm. uh, large audiences and the uh, plays have been uh, very well appreciated. Mm. Uh, so would you like to come into that? Yes, I, I think um, uh, Jack Davis's uh, plays about uh, Aboriginal uh, Australians have been, um, have been very strong drama indeed and mm. because they have a strong message. Um, about um, about the ways in which uh, Aboriginal people have been uh, suppressed uh, through their history of white Australia. Uh, at the same time, they're they're often comic. They're um, yeah. they're they're humorous. They're well written, um, and they present a point of view of uh, a people who who once had a proud history and are now mm. marginalised in Australian society and. Um, and writers like Jack Davis and uh, Sally Morgan, to take another yeah, example, yeah. Uh, these writers, both incidentally from Western Australia, mm -hmm. um, uh, have been uh, have been very significant in the recent uh, history of of Australian writing. Mm. 
Yeah, autobiographical writing, particularly by mm -hmm. uh, the aboriginal writers that you mentioned, yes. Sally Morgan's My Place or Ruby Langford's uh, Don't Take Your Love to Town. Mm -hmm. I think they have been uh, very significant uh, contributions and uh, uh, through these works they are trying to uh, come to grips with uh, their own history. Uh, I, w uh, I wonder if you'd like to say something more on that. Yes, I think um, a book that I would think uh, that uh, students of English in, in this country uh, would find extremely interesting is Sally Morgan's My Place, which you've just mentioned. Uh, uh, a book which is to some extent a detective uh, mm. story of, of, a, of a woman, young, uh, a girl, young woman um, uh, dis uh, being told um, that she was, uh, uh, because of her darker skin, uh, was Indian um, mm -hmm. in Australia, and that, that being much more acceptable than being Aboriginal. And, um, and uh, the, the racism implicit in that uh, point of view uh, is, um, is present. But there's no bitterness in this book. It's a book mm -hmm. about discovering oneself. And um, it's a book that, that has had a very wide uh, readership in, in Australia and, um, and in America and, um, and I think uh, deserves the international coverage that it's increasingly getting. Mm. Uh, one other area I think that uh, we need to talk about is poetry and uh, uh, the modernistic trends that you get in Australian poetry. Uh, there have been uh, poets like Robert Ray who have been influenced by Indian uh, modes of thought, mm. I should mm. think, uh, just as Madhuru has been, who took to uh, be a Buddhist uh, monk who was influenced to, uh, to a large extent by Buddhism. Mm. And uh, that, I think, establishes links with uh, the thought processes and, and, and exchange and influences from here and influences from yes. there, yeah. uh, which is very interesting, I should think. Yes, I think it is. Po poetry uh, is, is um, of course, thought, often thought to be um, a minority art form, uh, but in fact, uh, I think it's one of the best forms for teaching other cultures through literature. Um, it is, they, poetry often provides windows onto the world, um, and um, the poetry of Les Murray, for example, uh, which is um, uh, very much about the contemporary Australia, but about Australia in the country, Australia mm -hmm. of the bush, um, is very different from the urban poetry of, say, uh, Peter Porter, who lives mm -hmm. in London, um, but still continually writes about Australia. Uh, at the same time, uh, Dorothy Hewitt's poetry and, um, and the poetry of Gwen Harwood, um, and what a bore, mm -hmm. um, our, our, our student friends with too many names they, mm -hmm. they don't uh, know. <laughs> but. Uh, these sorts of writers, I think, are of, um, uh, of great significance in understanding uh, the poetry and the soul of, mm. um, of Australia. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very interesting, you know, this uh, what we call the unsettling of English, uh, that it brings in really uh, a lot of internationalism. And uh, uh, it's, it's not really, it's strictly, uh, I would think that it's not really the unsettling of English, uh, in the sense that uh, there is so much that is exchanged, uh, only that now the focus is uh, taken away just from one country uh, or one parent country, and it, sh it shifts uh, to a more global uh, interest, and at the same time keeps the local interests alive, which is very important for any literature, because the, the local interests uh, uh, provide you the uh, particular inputs. Uh, while the global uh, interest uh, makes it interesting, uh, there are interesting uh, ways of looking at it, and it, it, it makes it very meaningful, I should think. Yes, I think the, um, the 1970s saw a phase of the new nationalism in Australia, and since the 1970s, um, Australians have been much more prepared to see their own versions of English uh, being portrayed in literature and, um, and, across, and, and in films and across, and, and across the world. Uh, and um, that stage of self-confidence as a culture, uh, once that has been reached, I think you can do uh, 
enormous things with the language. Australian films have started to do that, mm. um, Australian autobiography, Australian drama, all the th things we've talked about um, mm. today uh, have, I think, uh, reached the stage where at the beginning of a new century, um, this, uh, this literary culture and this culture more broadly um, is one that is worth studying and, um, and, uh, and, and has its own kind of momentum. Yeah. And uh, I think, uh, therefore, uh, it's really important that, um, that we take on the influences from other countries even more as we, as we go forward. Yeah, and I think this uh, thing that you mentioned about films, uh, actually films, uh, television, and the relationship uh, of literature uh, with films and t television uh, is very important, very significant. Mm. And uh, I wonder if you'd like to say something more about that. Sure. Uh, we've, we've just uh, established um, uh, Fox Studios in, in, um, in Sydney, which um, I, I, uh, I'm not sure whether we'll, it'll become another Bollywood, but, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but certainly uh, International films w with international uh, influences will increasingly become part of the Australian scene. In the 1980s, we had a period of nationalistic filmmaking, mm. uh, some of which was outstandingly good, and I think will stand the test of time. But uh, things like films like Picnic at Hanging Rock or mm. My Brilliant Career, mm. um, uh, and um, and most um, recently, this was sent up in, um, in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, and films like Shine, which are uh, about dancing, um, uh, which uh, all of these films have had, um, I think, an international influence. But increasingly, perhaps, uh, we're going to see filmmaking uh, mm -hmm. as part of this international collaborative mm -hmm. exercise, uh, which has been too often dominated by Hollywood, by mm -hmm and by the American industry, but which I think um, Indian filmmakers and Australian filmmakers can, can break patterns and, and make things uh, more dynamic and more creative. Yeah. Um, we sincerely hope that we would get to see more of these films. Uh, incidentally, there's an Australian film festival uh, which uh, uh, takes off, I think, in a couple of days. And uh, Bruce is going to be there. I think it's the day after tomorrow. Uh, that's on the 12th of January uh, 2000. And uh, uh, we uh, look forward to these uh, uh, exchanges of films and film festivals from Australia, uh, uh, film festivals which can bring in films into India from Australia. Uh, so uh, with this note, I think uh, we would end the discussion and thank Bruce, who has been able to find time for us. and. Uh, be with us this afternoon. Thank you, well, Bruce. I thank you very much indeed, and um, and look forward to maintaining the collaboration with uh, with Indian uh, universities uh, through JNU and through IGNU and through other um, outlets. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>